sounding like Sadhguru. Talking and talking with no substance. Now, I'm going to 
כן, עוד פעם. societal dimension <coughs> to function as a body of society, these four principles are necessary and this is the basis of Sanatan Dharma. So to have righteous principles, you need economic development your desires, you also need economic development. This is the first stage of society. Then, when you have accomplished this stage, To go to the next level, you have to relinquish. You have to re relinquish entirely the first three attachments. Your attachment to religious principles, your attachment to economic development, and your attachment to fulfillment of desires. When you detach from these principles and you attach yourself to the Supreme Lord, then you are on an onward path to meeting your maker. You are on an onward path to meeting your maker. And this vehicle called the human body is awarded to you to initially follow religious principles, economic development and fulfillment of desires. <coughs> then you use the impetus of these three principles and you propel yourself for the fourth principle called liberation. And I want to explain to you graphically, and I'm sure many of you have noticed this on news. Have you all seen a rocket launched? Yes. T minus one, T minus two, T minus three, and then the rocket is fired and then it is launched. So when
when the rocket is launched, it is launched with different body parts. With different body parts. And when it reaches the atmosphere, it sheds off the other body parts and only the actual rocket itself. Only the actual rocket itself goes into orbit or space. So similarly, you have three basic bodies, the gross body, the subtle body, and the spiritual body. Gross body, subtle body, and spiritual body. So like the rocket needed fuel and computerization for it to take off, your body needs to be nourished. Your body needs to be nourished. When your body is nourished, then your mind is nourished. And when your mind is nourished, then your soul so, when, for the purposes of nourishment, and I'm talking about sattvic nourishment, for the purposes of nourishment, you need religious principles or righteous living. For righteous living, you need economic development. You can't just sit and live righteously. Nobody will pay the bills. Person. You can't take a few acorns, keep it in front of you, look at the acorns and say that's righteous living. You have to take the acorn, install it and earn a living. So when you earn your living righteously, it's called economic development. All right? Don't take economic development and join the EFF. Right? Economic freedom fighters. And then come back and tell me that you like the red overalls. And I said economic development. Not that type of economic development, Barton. Go and work and live righteously and earn righteously. Earn righteously. Then fulfill Righteous demands. Vasudeva, fulfill righteous desires. Righteous desires. So when we're talking about fulfillment of desires, don't go buy a bottle of whiskey because you desire whiskey. Don't go buy a kilo of chops because you desire meat. Righteous desires. Righteous desires. So you desire a companion, Watson. You're alone for a while now. Companions always elude you, Watson. So you must desire a righteous companion then you must desire a righteous house. We have a righteous daughter. I've been the guru for how many years? Okay. Are you understanding? All of you understanding? So righteous conduct. Society must have righteous conduct. To fulfill your righteous conduct, you have to earn righteousness. And when you earn righteously, you fulfill righteous desires. When you have completed this, then you have taken off the rocket as T minus 1, T minus 2, T minus 3, and you, you up now, you into the atmosphere. Now when you're there, then you need to discard you need to discard 
your attachments. You need to discard your attachment. Like the rocket discards its shell. Similarly, you need to discard all your attachments. And when you discard your attachments, you are in proximity of the Supreme Lord. And that's when you attain the Supreme Lord. And this is what Lord Sri Krishna says. He says, leave your attachments. Leave your attachments. Leave your religious principles that brought you to me. It already brought you to me. Like the rocket is already propelled into the atmosphere. You cannot take that attachment of the rocket uh -huh. anymore into its orbit. Similarly, you cannot take your attachments when you reach the Supreme Lord. You have to detach from all your attachments and attach yourself to the Supreme Lord, like the rocket attaches itself into <coughs> orbit. All of you understand? And this is an explanation of what Lord Sri Krishna is stating. Okay. Another question? Jessica, Satish, this question and answer session. Are you satisfied with the answer, Sadibai? Thank you, Guruji. Thank you very much. <coughs> so now don't scratch your farm. In this satsang, money will never come. <laughs> You have to earn it. <laughs> uh -huh. You have to earn it. Catching palm don't work here. Camper and globe don't work here. Uh -huh. Doesn't work here. Why are you asking about that? Gosh, why? Millions of questions you had. Ask the Guru one. Okay, let me try this one. Yeah. Guruji, I'd like you to explain us karma. Is it a, like an Indian word? Or I see like other races are also using karma. Okay. Karma means action only. Karma is equivalent to Newton's law of action rate. Karma is equivalent to Newton's law of action and reaction. Material science is cross, spiritual science is subtle. As you see a cross entity, if it bangs against another cross entity, what happens? The action is equal to the reaction. You take a ball, you bang it against that wall, it will deflect in an equal but opposite. Equal but opposite. The word karma should be associated to equal but opposite. So for every action, and this corroborates material science. So, as material science, cross science, for every action there is an equal but op opposite reaction, in the subtle spiritual science, for every action there is an equal reaction. So the, if the action is positive, the reaction will be proportionately positive and if the action is negative, the reaction will be proportionately negative. Okay? And it's an absolute science. Whatever you sow, 
so shall you reap. If you plant marigolds, you will never get roses. Hmm? If you plant marigolds, you will never get roses. If you plant banana, you will never get orange. Okay? So, this entire universe is karma. If you withdraw karma, then there will be no material universe. And if you withdraw action in gross, in material science, the minute you withdraw action in material science, there will be no universe. So action is moving energy. And energy is always moving and transforming from one form to a Another, it's always moving, it's always transforming. It's kaleidoscopic. It's kaleidoscopic. It's never ending. There's always movement. Okay? So karma, like Sanatana Dharma, is universal. Everyone breathes in, everyone breathes out. It doesn't matter which religious organization you belong to, which denomination you belong to, what is your culture, what is your creed. You breathe in, you breathe out. And that is Sanatana Dharma. And that is Karma. You remove Karma, no material universes, both in the subtle form or the gross form. Are you satisfied with the answer to us by? Yes. Okay, one more question and we'll close up for the night. When it has any, you ask. Is there any possibility to change your destiny in this life? Well, the Bhagavad Gita states that if you receive transcendental knowledge, that transcendental knowledge <coughs> will burn away your maya of beginningless karma. Karma is the GPS of your destiny. So if there is no karma, there is no destiny. Right? And I will satisfy you with a reading from the Bhagavad Gita. You ask a question, I will open the Bhagavad Gita before you ask the question. Isn't it? Bhagavad Gita is always very open. Is it? Chapter 9, verse 29. I am the same to all creation. Full stop. There is none hateful or dear to me. But those who worship me with devotion abide in me and I do abide in them. That he, if even the most sinful man worships me with undivided devotion, comma, he must be regarded as holy for he has rightly resolved. Thirty-one. Quickly he becomes righteous and obtains everlasting peace. Affirm on my behalf, comma, O Arjuna. My devotee never perishes. Thirty-two. 